All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the respiratory system. The respiratory system is divided into upper and lower respiratory tract. In the upper respiratory tract, we have sinuses, which in this image, we see the frontal sinus as well as the sphenoid sinus. And their main function is to secrete mucus in order to protect us against infection. Many of you have heard about sinusitis. So sinusitis is the inflammation of the sinuses. This can occur due to viral infection or bacterial infection of the sinuses. That's why we feel stuffy when we have an inflammation there. The nose is also part of the upper respiratory tract and its main function is to humidify the air before it reaches the lungs. Finally, we have the pharynx. The pharynx is divided into nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, and laryngopharynx. It's easy to remember which one comes first because nasal means nose, oral means mouth, and laryngo is close to the larynx. Next, we have the lower respiratory tract. So in the lower respiratory tract, we have the larynx or the voice box. So when somebody has laryngitis, they have an inflammation in the larynx and they have that raspy voice. We also have the trachea, which is the windpipe, the bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this lecture is that the alveoli is where gas exchange occurs. So write that down or go over it because I guarantee you, you will see it on the TEAS exam. So now that we've learned about the upper and lower respiratory tract, let's talk about the function of the respiratory system. So the primary function of the respiratory system is gas exchange. So basically gas exchange is the removal of carbon dioxide in exchange for oxygen. So if you remember from a previous video about the cardiovascular system, we talked about the pulmonary arteries and how the pulmonary arteries take deoxygenated blood to the lungs. That's where gas exchange occurs, right? Carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen and then oxygenated blood comes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. So secondary functions of the respiratory system include pH regulation of the blood. So this is controlled by the medulla oblongata, which measures the levels of carbon dioxide in blood. So the medulla oblongata will determine if the body needs to release carbon dioxide by hyperventilating and making the blood more basic or by reducing the respiratory rate and causing hypoventilation, which causes your pH to become acidic. So hyperventilation means fast breathing, while hypoventilation means slower breathing. Another secondary function of the respiratory system is thermal regulation. So capillaries within the respiratory tract, specifically in the trachea and nasal passages, are going to conserve heat by constricting or becoming narrower, and they're going to release heat by dilating or becoming wider. Other secondary functions of the respiratory system include detecting smells and speech production. So speech production is generated by vibrations of the vocal folds within the larynx. And the last secondary function of the respiratory system is protection against disease. So for example, hairs in our nostrils serve as a filter that trap debris with mucus. We also have cilia, which are hair-like particles that expose debris that might be lined up in the respiratory tract. We also have lysozymes, which are found within the mucus and they basically break down debris that might be found there. Macrophages are another type of cell, which are basically phagocytes. So that means that they eat other cells um, and they protect the lungs by engulfing those particles or that debris that might be dangerous um, for the respiratory tract. And lastly, we have goblet cells which secrete mucus. Now let's talk about gas exchange. So as I mentioned before, breathing, or specifically respiratory rate, is controlled by the medulla oblongata. So during this process, the diaphragm and their intercostal muscles will contract, so they will move down to create more space and allow air to come in. So the main thing I want you to remember is that the primary inspiratory muscles are going to be the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles. Also, this rhythmic process of moving air in and out of the lungs is called ventilation. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about how air reaches the lungs. So it's first inhaled through the nose. It passes the pharynx, 
then the larynx, which is also known as the voice box. Then it goes through the trachea, which is the windpipe. Then it goes through the right and left primary bronchi. It then goes to the secondary bronchi, then tertiary bronchi. It reaches the bronchioles. It becomes a bronchial tree. And then this terminal bronchial tree is divided into respiratory bronchioles that have alveoli. So remember, if there's one thing I want you to remember is that alveoli is where gas exchange occurs. So once oxygen reaches the alveoli, gases begin to diffuse. So oxygen is diffused into the blood and carbon dioxide is diffused out of the blood as a waste product of cellular respiration. Before I continue talking about cellular respiration, I want to mention a structure called the epiglottis. So this is an important structure that might appear on your T's exam. So the epiglottis is a structure that covers the trachea when we're eating so that food or water doesn't enter the respiratory system. So if food or water does enter the respiratory system, that's when we begin to cough. So we have that cough reflex. So now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about cellular respiration. So for the T's exam, you must know the equation for cellular respiration. Specifically, you must know the reactants of cellular respiration as well as the byproducts. So the reactants of cellular respiration are going to be found on the left side of the equation, and that's going to be glucose and oxygen. The byproducts of cellular respiration are going to be carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Finally, let's talk about the structure of the lungs as well as the alveoli. So we have two lungs. Our left lung has two lobes, while the right lung has three lobes. The lungs have a channel or groove in them that's called the hilum. The hilum provides axes of entry to pulmonary vessels, nerves, and lymphatics. Additionally, the lungs have two serous membranes called pleura. The first one is called parietal pleura. This pleura covers the outer part of the lungs and is attached to the chest wall and diaphragm. The other is called visceral pleura and is covering the inner linings of the lung. Every time you see visceral, that means that it is attached to the organ. Between both of the pleuras lies a space called the pleural cavity, where pleural fluid is found. The pleural fluid acts as a lubricant to reduce friction. This is very important to know, guys. I guarantee you, you will see probably a question about this or about the next topic that I'm gonna be talking about, which is surfactant. So the alveoli has two types of pneumocytes. Type one is involved in gas exchange, while type two is involved in secretion of surfactant. So the main function of surfactant is to prevent the alveoli from collapsing. I guarantee you'll see a question about this on the T's exam. 